This is a video demonstrating Porto Marble for the Professional Painter and Decorator magazine. The article can be found in the spring edition. I have prepared the sample board in Benjamin Moore Regal Select Pearl Finish Black Eggshell. This is a nice low sheen black eggshell that covers in two coats. I'm going to lightly sand it and uh, use a tack rag to move it, remove the dust. product I'm going to be using for the majority of this demonstration is matte medium. My preferred brand is Golden. The colours on my palette are white, yellow ochre and burnt sienna. I've mixed the matte medium 50-50 with water. I'm going to mix a little blend of these colours, quite a lot of matte medium. I have a damp sponge. I'm going to break this up quite heavily with the sponge and also move it round. This just gives a lightly mottled background that at the end will help create the background texture that occurs in Portoro. It also gives us a little bit of structure to work with when we're creating the veining. Now, I've used just water in the sponge. I'm now going to add some methylated spirits. And I'm going to use a cotton rag just to blot that where it's very moist. You wouldn't have to use matte medium, you could use scumble if you're working over a very large area. Just blotting off the excess. Any areas that are too heavy, just keep working back in with the methylated spirits and it will open it, open up these areas. Finally, soften them off with a badger softener. Something a bit heavy at the bottom, so I'm going to put a bit more metal spirits on there.
softening it off, gives us nice cloudy shapes in the background that are quite typical in Porto marble. You would then leave that to dry and it should be dry enough to work on in about 20 to 30 minutes. When I'm creating the marble chains, uh, the veining for Portoro, um, I usually do it with the matte medium, which I described before, and with that mixed 50-50 with water. Um, sometimes the surface needs a little bit more slip, and so if you wanted to, you could just wipe a thin layer of scumble glaze over the surface. Now, bear in mind that if you do this, you won't get complete in a day. So if it's a small project, it's worth struggling on with just the matte medium. And I say struggle, it's not really a struggle. This does, whoops, this does give you uh, just a bit more, a bit more slip and a bit more play. On my palette, I have my key colors, which are white, burnt sienna and yellow ochre. And the way I achieve the veining with Porto is to double load my brush so that there's a little bit of each of the colours on the brush. So one side has the burnt sienna, the other side has the yellow ochre, but mostly I've got white on there. The method of achieving the veins is by dipping and rolling the brush. So lift to make a fine, fine line, dip to make the fatter marks on the page. Don't worry about them being pale at this stage because you can beef them up later on. People forget that just lifting it to the very tip gives you can give you the very fine line, but you can equally just get a very fat line just by pressing the brush down. I know that sounds really obvious. Sometimes people make it more complicated than that. little fine lines that make up the background. Now to get the very milky and soft cloudy tones, take a piece of cotton rag and create a pad to blot the veins with. So you blot it and lift and then change the part of the, of the rag you're going to use because if you were to use that bit again you would print onto the surface. Blotting these gives you that nice translucent milky look that these veins so often have. Don't worry about them being pale because we'll beef them up in the overglazing. And when softening them, you want to wait until after they've been blotted or let them set up for a little bit of time. And this little badger from my paintbrush is the perfect tool. If, you're, if they're too wet, they're going to smudge and smear like that one there. You can retrieve it, but you don't want them to be too wet. And so this is how you build up your veining pattern across the surface. I'll do one more and then we'll come back when we're doing the next stage. A bit more scumble. One of the big mistakes that people make with Portoro is that they have these veins coming down Generally they're parallel, occasionally you see the marble offset at an angle, but what happens is they make them 
equidistant and they keep the activity all in the same place so that it becomes manufactured looking and this is something that you want to avoid so maybe have two closer together and then a bigger gap and just think a little bit about the composition um, as you're working once again double load the brush burnt sienna yellow ochre and white and then we'll come down with our dipping and rolling this time I'm going to keep it quieter in this area here a little bit more activity down here pick this up show you a little trick with a, another tool. And this tool is the wipeout tool. These are rubber tipped brushes and they're great if you feel you've made a mistake or you've blurred an area you can just use the rubber tool to wipe back. Or create interest inside the veins. You don't have to buy a specialist tool, you can just use a piece of old razor or, or new eraser even. What they are very good for is for straightening up the back edge if that becomes messy. And you can use the excess paint to create fine veins. back into these areas. And there are fine veins that crisscross from each of the, the main vein formations, but they do have a tendency to take off from suitable points. So you'll see as you create your veining, there'll be areas like that one there, and that's Perfect. So a tiny little vein, just shoot off from there. Creating these little loops, joining up the shapes, which is all part of the characteristic of the marble. carry on with this and when we come back we'll look at the overglazing <coughs> um, and putting in the milky stones that appear in the portal. So having built our main chains we've allowed it to dry and we're now going to increase the depth of the of the veining um, by overglazing. On my palette I've got raw umber and Payne's grey and I'm using a little bit of the matte medium watered down. I'm using a spalter, just a little cheap spalter. Um, you could use an overgrainer if you wanted to. I use a spalter and a comb to open it up to create fingers. So having separated the bristles, draw across the veins. Not everywhere, there's a few areas and then wipe away from the background so that there's not a shadow of this little overgreening pattern. It just gives little shadows. Each time you draw up new colour, separate the bristles create a little fan and 
and remember to wipe away the excess from the background. You might not see it initially, but when you varnish, you will. Don't go everywhere because you're going to use another colour once this is dry. Clean my brush and then I'm going to go over to a different palette. So we're using Burnt Umber, Yellow Ochre and Burnt Sienna. Again, it's a matte medium. And this will intensify the yellow from the goldiness. Once again, separate the bristles with a comb. It's quite subtle, you can add a bit more colour. It's really powerful there. Too powerful, so you take a little bit off. Add in where there's already some yellowy gold, just to heighten the tone. And in this manner, build up extra tone and texture. You can always take away if you feel that there's something that's just too much or you don't like, you can always take it away or break it up if you feel it looks too mechanical. Once you've achieved the depth and tone that you're happy with, leave this to thoroughly dry. The penultimate stage is to put a wash of Van Dyke Brown on. This intensifies everything and it's just a thin wash. Van Dyke Brown and the matte medium. And you can see that that really deepens up the veins. However, you might not want them to be quite as dark, but it's quite nice to age all this background. So, having put it on, soften it with a badger. wipe back a few high spots so that it's not all one tone. You can use a cloth or a sponge like I'm doing here. And we will be putting some vinyl white spots in so don't worry if the whole thing becomes too browny bronzy coloured. Soften this and leave it to dry. Each layer should only take about 15 to 20 minutes to dry. So 
so it's quick to build these up. And the quick thin layers are what give you the depth in the marble. The final stage of this marble is to paint in the ghostly shapes that are very characteristic in this marble. And so we're using white acrylic paint and the um, matte medium, thinned matte medium, and very pale. And you can use the original structure that you created with the sponge as a way of sort of guiding you. It gives, it sort of suggests shapes. They also follow in between, kind of follow the shapes that you've created with the main veins. Block them immediately and then soften and you should get a nice edge. Almost too dark. A white edge. Just use that a little bit. Soften. This is also the time to put in a few, few very white lines to create the contrast. Because of course we've washed over a lot of the background and we've lost a little bit of the of the drama. So we can put in so I don't want that one to be too white. I'm going to bring it across here. And we can also bring in some fissures. I'm going to sharpen the edge of that one. Just using a wipeout tool. Carry on working over the whole piece, building up the shapes and doing the highlighting. 